It's now time for Global Insight, where we speak to experts from around the world on issues making headlines. Now, South Korea and Austria celebrate 130 years of trade ties on Thursday. Bilateral trade relations stretch back to 1892 during Korea's Joseon Dynasty and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Now, the two monarchies were divided, of course, and they ceased to exist in the post-war era. But new diplomatic ties were established between South Korea and Austria in 1963, and a trade treaty was signed eight years later. Since then, bilateral trade has been growing steadily, turning into a strategic partnership just last year. Today, we discuss this historic milestone and what lies ahead for the two countries, particularly during this time when the world has suffered years of sluggish growth, rising protectionism, topped with geopolitical conflict, supply chain disturbances, and of course, the COVID-19 pandemic. So for this discussion, we have in the studio today, Wolfgang Kostinger, Austrian Trade Commissioner and Commercial Counselor at Advantage Austria Seoul. Very warm welcome to you, Mr. Kostinger. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And well, it's, uh, it's quite a historic milestone, especially for a modern state like uh, South Korea, which was divided um, in the, uh, the mid 20th century, of course. And of course, uh, our trade relations have come through leaps and bounds. But what is the status of South Korea and Austria's trade relations today in 2022? Well, uh, the trade relations between Austria and Korea, they have uh, developed very well during the last years. And in 2021, exports grow by more than 13% uh, percent, uh, after minor setback due to the pandemic. The trade volume has uh, already surpassed the volume of 2018. And in addition, now that traveling is possible again, we see a steady increase in business travels. For example, in late May, uh, a delegation of the Tyrol branch of the Federation of Austria uh, visited Korea to explore new fields of uh, cooperation. And then less than two weeks ago, uh, Advantage Austria had a pavilion at the, Aus at the Seoul Food Fair with uh, 11 Austrian companies that participated. And uh, the sector which has experienced the most remarkable growth in terms of exports was the automotive sector. But there's also been a steady increase in chemicals, pharmaceuticals and uh, machinery for the railway sector. Hi, very diverse industries we're talking about here. And it's been quite encouraging, really, because during this uh, prolonged slump in global trade, it's quite obvious that South Korean and Austrian businesses are uh, finding potential business opportunities together, opportunities for collaboration. But there are already a number of Austrian businesses established here in South Korea, I believe. What are some brands or Austrian businesses here in the country? Well, the most famous and well-known Austrian consumer brands in Korea are obviously Swarovski and Red Bull, although not everyone in Korea might be aware that these are Austrian brands. Uh, but then again, when you see a BMW 5 Series or a Mercedes G-Class in the streets of Seoul, uh, they have been produced in Austria, uh, in Graz, the second city of, uh, of Austria. Then when you go skiing in one of Korea's ski resorts, there is a high chance that you use a cable car made by the Austrian manufacturer Doppelmayr, for example. But where Austrian companies really excel is in the B2B business. Uh, these companies are not that well known to the wider public. Uh, we used to call them hidden champions. Most of them are uh, in the realm of high tech, in particularly uh, mechanical engineering, metal manufacturing and electronics. And there are roughly 200 uh, of those hidden Austrian uh, champions and some of them even with production site in in Korea and also in fields where you would not expect it. There is one that produces damper systems for the shipbuilding industry. Another one produces uh, printed circuit boards for special applications like hearing devices or cochlear implants. And another company specialized on software for autonomous driving. Right. They are hidden champions indeed, even here in South Korea. We simply cannot do without them, although they might not be so conspicuous. But, mm -hmm. well, uh, you have 100 offices. Uh, Advantage Austria has 100 offices in over 70 countries, and obviously Seoul is one of them. So what makes the South Korean market really attractive for Austrian businesses? Yeah, well, it's correct. Uh, our organization, Advantage Austria, has around 100 offices worldwide. And uh, Advantage offers, uh, Austria offices are in every major city in Asia. Our office here in Seoul exists for more than 45 years. And South Korea is the third biggest market for Austrian companies in 
Asia, uh, well, shortly after China and Japan. Uh, Austrian companies appreciate the solution-driven mindset of Korean business partners, the speed, the fastness, and uh, the will of getting things done. A uh, very safe, stable and sound economic environment is also very helpful for Austrian businesses here. And on the other hand, Korean consumers, they really value uh, high quality products, excellent services and re uh, reliability. And these are all qualities that Austrian companies can offer. So Austria and Korea, it's a perfect match. Right. And well, as for South Korea, we've seen some unicorns in the uh, business to consumer market, but there's something of a slump in the B2B market. So mm. how can Austria and South Korea really come together in that regard? What kind of solutions do you think they could adopt here? Well, there is a lot of Aust that Austrian companies can offer in terms of uh, advanced technologies in green tech, including renewable energy production, circular economies, recycling, uh, wastewater treatment, filtering. Um, Austria itself has set the ambitious goal to achieve carbon neutrality already by 2040. Uh, one example of uh, Austrian expertise already present in Korea is the production of electric power with uh, biomass. Furthermore, many of the hydroelectric power plants here in South Korea do work with uh, Austrian turbines. And uh, there is an Austrian company, for example, also that is providing uh, quite recently monitoring systems for water quality uh, for some Korean municipalities as well. Right, and these are some key technologies in moving forward towards sustainability and carbon neutrality, of course. And well, um, in terms of doing that, developing new emerging technologies and really adapting to the changing conditions of our world today. Uh, Seoul and Vienna, they signed a new agreement in 2019, agreeing to um, broaden science and tech exchanges between mm -hmm. the two countries. So what are some areas that you see the highest potential for that kind of collaboration to happen? Mm -hmm. Well, I see a big potential for synergy in materials research, in 5G and later on in 6G. Uh, networks in Internet of Things, in autonomous driving, especially in the field of uh, autonomous driving, there's already some uh, collaboration uh, going on between Austrian and Korean companies and uh, energy storage systems like solid state batteries would be a great field for joint research and obviously it will be essential to work together on uh, renewable energies and technologies to mitigate climate change. Right, and uh, for both economies, manufacturing is a, uh, is a huge uh, part of the economic uh, composition there in both markets. And while the health of small and medium businesses, that's very important, and their startups need to be encouraged and innovation needs to happen. So in regards of doing that, you have the um, Go Seoul program, which helps Austrian mm -hmm. businesses uh, make inroads into the South Korean market. So uh, what, does, what benefits does your program offer and uh, what are you looking forward to in you know, seeing from this year's lineup? Mm. Yeah, well, the Go Soul program already exists uh, since uh, 2018. Uh, actually, I have to mention that Austrian economy is very much based on small and medium-sized enterprises, also on startups, and these companies are very flexible and uh, they can very quickly adapt to market changes. Uh, well, as I said, we started successful in 2018. Uh, in 2020, we had to do the event for obvious reasons uh, virtually. Uh, and in November 2021, we already had a group of seven Austrian startups. Uh, it's a one week accelerator program for Austrian later stage startups that aim to internationalize towards the Korean market. We have an excellent collaboration with our Korean partners like uh, DCAMP, like KISET, the Korean Institute of Startup and Entrepreneurship Development, and of course COTRA. And end of September this year, we're going to have another group of seven Austrian startups uh, who will have the chance to gather uh, an insight of uh, Korea's impressive innovation culture. Uh, these companies will also have B2B meetings with uh, potential Korean partner companies. And uh, some of the participants of previous Go Seoul editions, they were so successful that they were able to set up a branch office and their own business here in Korea. And we, we are very confident that in the next edition of the Seoul, Go Seoul program, there will be some of the Austrian companies who have come to stay. Sure. And well, 
currently the trade between the two countries it's, it, it is rather focused on the technical uh, mm. side of things machinery mm. auto parts automobiles so do you see any room for more uh, cultural exchanges and content being um, exported and imported between the two countries definitely uh, and as you've kindly mentioned in the beginning we are celebrating this year 130 years uh, anniversary of uh, relations between our two countries and therefore we're going to have a number of cultural events in autumn this year for example the museum of fine arts of vienna will showcase a huge exhibition of their world famous paintings at the seoul national museum uh, inauguration will take place by the end of october then world renowned orchestras like viennese philharmonics um, viennese symphonic orchestra bruckner orchestra are going to have concerts in Korea's major uh, concert halls. And on the other hand, there are also many, many Korean music students, violinists, pianists, uh, who study at Austrian conservatories and also music schools. And now, as the travel restrictions have eased, we're also going to see a lot more Korean tourists who really appreciate Austrian cities like uh, Vienna, Salzburg, uh, Innsbruck, and not only enjoy the beautiful landscapes and the museums, but also, for example, attending concerts in our music halls. Well, my mother being a pianist might be the first on that flight uh, to your country <laughs> to really appreciate the Greatly musical welcome. scene there. And well, uh, there have been various milestones throughout South Korea and Austria's uh, trade relations, of course, stretching back 130 years uh, on this very, from this very day. And well, in terms of moving that relationship forward, uh, what are some priority goals or projects that you have as trade commissioner? Well, as Austrian Trade Commissioner, my key goals uh, are to have even more Austrian companies in the fields of green technologies and renewable energies in Korea. Uh, Austria is the world market leader in plastic recycling plants, in glass recycling plants, in uh, mobile processing plants for uh, building waste. Uh, Austrian companies are global players in water treatment, in water quality monitoring and in renewable energies like hydropower and biomass. Uh, so it's my goal to further increase uh, Austrian technology in South Korea in these fields of uh, green technologies and for the protection of our environment. Uh, to achieve this, our Office of Advantage Austria is going to organize a, a whole range of events like uh, conferences, business missions, technical seminars, but we will also organize incoming missions for Korean stakeholders so they can visit and actually see how the whole concept and project of sustainable energy and uh, circular economy works in Austria. Right, a lot of exciting projects coming up and a lot of room for future collaboration between South Korea and Austria. Well, thank you very much, Wolfgang Kostinger, Trade Commissioner at Advantage Austria. Thank Advantage you so much Austria. for having me. It's <laughs> wonderful having you in our studio and yeah, um, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, thank you so much. Come Samnida. Come Samnida.